We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, we kind of dove in there a little bit last week. We, you know, we kind of had gone out of 11. We weren't really um, on top of, of sharing everything we needed to share last week, so we're going to kind of back up. We just kind of got into it a little bit. Uh, but let's go ahead. We'll just back up to verse 1 in fact, chapter 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, or we, as we said before, the word gifts is, is italicized, not in the Greek, therefore... Uh, it's not there. So it's now, and the word, word for spiritual is plural in the Greek. And so it's now concerning spirituals. Uh, one person in common on this said, uh, one way to translate it is now things of and concerning the Holy Ghost. Okay? Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give to you to understand that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus a curse. Now, I understand Sometimes the Bible says some things that you can go out and on purpose say things, okay? Um, there are people who say, well, I, I, I confess Jesus is Lord, and they don't really mean it from their heart. Now, the Bible teaches us very clearly in Romans chapter 10 and also over in Mark 11 that what you say with your mouth has to be agreed upon within your heart in order for it to be effective or to be what you really mean, Okay? And so when he says here, no man can call Jesus a curse, I mean, um, um, call Jesus, no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, um, you know, somebody can say, I'm speaking by the Spirit of God, and they say, no, you can't. You cannot speak by unction of the Spirit and curse Jesus. And no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So that doesn't mean there's somebody that's possessed with devils goes, Jesus is Lord. You know, Jesus is Lord. You know, remember, remember the demon that came to Jesus? We know who they are. They are the Son of God. Um, have you come to torment us before the time? Well, they weren't speaking by the Holy Ghost. Okay? And, and so what he's saying here is you can't confess Jesus in the, as the Lordship of your life without the unction and the inspiration of the Spirit confirming with your heart. Okay. Then he goes on here and starts, he says, Now there are different uh, diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. You know, there's different endowments by God. Now, not, now listen, this, doesn't, this is not limited simply to the, what we refer to as the nine gifts of the Spirit. You know, it's whatever, you know, it can refer to apostles, prophets, you know, ministry gifts. It can, it can refer to uh, other giftings that God has for you. Uh, so there are, this is, this is uh, one person said, this, this chapter deals with the, um, the differences of gifts in the church. The next chapter deals with the spirit by which they operate. And then the 14th chapter deals with the way they are to operate in the church. So this, this lays out that there are differences or diversities of gifts. Chapter 13 deals with the spirit, which is love, in which those are to manifest and operate. You know, sometimes we take the love chapter and make it, you know, we, we kind of live in a way that it's not really the way it was intended. You know, we can't judge anything. We can't, you know, you know love believes the best of every person. That's really not what the Greek says. It really insinuates love wants to believe the best. If some guy's standing with a shotgun trying to blow your head off, uh, you can't go, I really don't believe he wants to do that. Or he just blew your kid's head off or something. He really didn't mean to do that. You know, that's, that's foolish, you know. And oh, I, I'm not going to do anything. Yes, I am. Hello. So the Amplified says it real well. Love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. In other words, its first response is not the negative or unbelief or criticism or judgment. It wants to believe good. All right. But sometimes it, there's no good to believe. Hello. All right. So there, there are differences or diversities of gift, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations. Now, the margin says, and, and the Greek bears it out, that this word administration means ministries. There are different ministries in the body of Christ. And there's different, some people get upset when you say there's different levels of anointing on ministries. All right? Um, not everybody's called to be a Ryan Hart monkey. Well, we're all called to evangelists, but you're not all called to be a Ryan Hart monkey. You might be evangelizing to 30 people at a time instead of a million. Okay? It's not a slam and a slight that you're not caught. It's the way it was the anointing that was given. And here's the problem. When people try to emulate or copy someone else's anointing simply because they want to be like them, hello, you get into trouble. 
instead of staying with your calling and your anointing. There are differences of administrations or different ministries. We do know that there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in the body of Christ. There are different ministries in the body of Christ. And we have to, re and in recognizing that, we have to walk in the light of it. And if we are one of the ones that has a different level or a different calling, then we walk in it. Amen. <clears throat> so there are different ministries. It's the same Lord. There are diversities of operations. Now, this is interesting. The word operation here comes from a Greek that means miracles. Or there are different, uh, di there are diversities of applications of God's power. Now, um, when we get into the gifts of healings, we'll talk about this some more. But you'll see in certain ministries, there, there's different anointings even in certain ministries. Now, we have, and, and we've, we just, I've really come to understand this as of late, just kind of dawned on me one day. And I'm sitting around going, you know, well, we lay hands on people in church all the time. And we don't nearly see the results that we do from prayer cloths. I don't know why. Except... There are differences of, of miracle powers or differences of, of way that that has been given out by the Holy Ghost. You know, you go study Brother uh, uh, Branham, you brother study Brother Hagen, you study different ministries who had healing anointings, and they had different ways that those things happened. Yeah, some people have miracle anointings where the things just grew that weren't there. You know, eyeballs, uh, you know, different, different types of anointings. And, and so there are differences or diversities of operation or miracle powers. But listen, it's the same God that works all in all. So if God anoints this one to, to have a, a, a ministry along this line that's a miracle ministry, and you go back and study your prophets, not all the prophets had the same type of anointing. Elijah had one. Elisha asked for a double portion and was promised that if he saw him go up, he would. Now, we know in the, in the ministry of, the, of those prophets, uh, I, I'm, I just kind of went blank for a second, but one of them, a, 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 an axe head floated. When you study Elijah, or Elisha, you found out he did 13 miracles in his ministry that are recorded. Elijah did seven, except that after Elijah di Elisha died, somebody, uh, they were in a battle, and they threw some young man who got killed in the battle into his sepulcher. He rolled down, fell against his bones, got raised from the dead. So the 14th happened posthumously. Hallelujah. Wow, there's so much anointing left in those bones that it, it, it fulfilled the promise of God that you would do work, uh, a double portion. Now, and so, it's, but the manifestation of the Spirit, now he says, he goes here and tells us that there are, there are different, different types of gifts. There are different types of ministries. There's different ways uh, that God's power is manifest or given. Then he comes out and says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, however God manifests these different things in people's lives, therefore the purpose of profiting with all. God wants to bring profit and blessing and help to people in need. Can somebody say amen? Then he comes and starts and goes, for to one is given by the Spirit. You can't give it to yourself. Now, we might notice a uh, pattern of an anointing working or a gift working in your life, but you can't give it to yourself and you can't make it happen unless the Lord specifically told you something. If you go back and study uh, Dad Hagen's ministry, I remember when Jesus appeared to him and said he laid the right, the, 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 the right finger of his hand, hand to the palm of his right hand, and he said, I've given unto thee a special anointing to, to heal the sick. And he says, now, you, you, you tell the people, you tell them that I appear to you. You tell them that I took the right, my right finger and laid it in the palm of your ha right hand and said that I gave you a special anointing. You tell them that, and, and, and when you tell them that, it'll stir up faith in them, and, and, they'll, and then when you lay hands on them, they'll receive and act on that. Amen? And, and he would tell you. He'd be talking about that sometime. He'd say, as soon as I started telling you that, that Jesus appeared to me, my hand started to burn and begin to minister to the sick. Hallelujah. Well, that's why Jesus, see, Jesus told him to do it a certain way. Now, he told him to tell the people that. Notice, now if you'll study Brother Hagin's ministry, he never laid hands on himself until that time that he was really sick. And he was believing, confessing, declaring. He had just told Sister Aretha, he said, you're going to have to go call Dr. So-and-so. I'm sick as a horse. He said, you know what that means? That's sick big. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And he's laying there, and he said, Lord, I've missed it somewhere. And you can't miss it. I know I've missed it somewhere. He said, he said, didn't I tell you that I've anointed you? He said, lay your hands on yourself, and it'll work for you just like it does for other people. Up until that time, we had no record. And even in his own life, he said, said that he ever laid his hands on himself. The Lord had to instruct him in that path. Hallelujah. And he did, and he got, he got healed. Praise God. Amen. So let's get into these different gifts here. He says, for one, we, we could call these manifestations. We can call them gifts. You know, the word gift coming from the Greek, um, uh, charis, gifting. Yeah, amen. And, um, or charismata. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. And meaning gifting. He's got gifts. We have gifts or manifestations. These are gifts or manifestations of the Spirit. Now, when we say gifts, they are gifts to the church. They are not a gift to you. Understand that. You do not get to go, I've got this. Because even if you've got it, it doesn't manifest unless the Spirit wills. Hello. We trust the Holy Ghost. We, we trust to be led by the Spirit. But you know, there's been times I've went and gone to minister to people and there's no anointing. Well, what do you do? The Bible tells me I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, but it's not that manifestation. It's a different thing. So what do we do? We just, we, what we operate in what the Word of God promises us. But unless he, the Holy Ghost tells us, that, you know, or we're, you know, as you learn to walk with him, learn his voice, learn to understand and know, the, recognize the presence of his anointing, you can, you can, you can in maturity, go and, send, and, and know that things are manifested. manifested. Right. Hallelujah. So to one is given by the Spirit. How is it given by? The Spirit. The word of wisdom. Now, and then another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. So we have here, first of all, the word of wisdom. What's, what is the word of wisdom? Well, um, I, like, I love the way Dad Hagen, you know, explained these. He said it is, it is a um, God giving you part of the, of the wisdom of God in, in relation to future events or in, in counsel on how to operate for things coming in the future. God gives you a word. Oftentimes, now as we, ha we have here... and. Let me just go ahead and read all these. This given the word of wisdom, another by the word of knowledge by the same spirit, another faith, or as the Amplified Bible says, special faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing. If you read the end of this chapter, it says the gift of healings. So we know that it should be gifts of healings um, by the same spirit to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues. Um, it's really kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues, but all these work at that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And then we're going to stop there. We have here nine, nine manifestations or gifts listed. Then we can categorize them into three separate categories, vocal, revelation, amen, and power. Well, vocal gifts are real easy. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Revelation, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. And the power is the gifts of healings, working of miracles, and um, special faith. All right? Now, they're not, they're not listed in those three, but that's, that's how you could categorize them. And so the word of wisdom, you know, God, one person described God as sitting at the center of a spoke wheel. And he can look up here and see the, the present. He can look a couple of spokes over and see the future. He can look a couple of spokes back and see the past. Okay, because why? There's no time in the spirit. All right, it's, you know, time is basically, you know, the the, the time we how we know time doesn't exist in the spirit. Days is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day with the Lord. Hallelujah! And so God knows what's going to happen. Now here here is something we can just kind of uh, drift off just a little bit, because there's a lot of people who believe in an election. You know that God, and, and they but they mean it in this way. In a Calvinistic way that, you know, God elected Karen to get saved. Karen's going to get saved no matter what. God's chosen Karen to get saved. Therefore, he's made everything happen that's going to cause her to get saved. I believe in election based on foreknowledge. And I believe the Bible bears that out. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. 
So my, my view of election, so if you take all the scriptures of election and put them with for whom he foreknew, he did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Now election becomes based on foreknowledge. God saw Karen get saved, come to the place where she accepted Jesus as Lord. Therefore, he predestined her to be conformed to his image. He can do that. Well, I don't believe that. What well, didn't John the Baptist say of Jesus? What did he say about him? Behold the Lamb of God, what? Slain from the foundation of the earth. God saw man fall, predestined Jesus to take his place. So thousands of years before he ever went to the cross, he was already predestined to die on the cross. After he saw the fall. So he already made provision from the foundation. Before, the, before Adam was ever created, Jesus had already been predestined to take his place in substitution. Well, if he did that with Jesus, he did that with you. If you're born again, you weren't, it wasn't some God made you get saved and he just decided that Jeff is going to get saved. Now, Jeff's brother's going to hell. That's just the way it is. That's not how it's designed. That's misinterpretation. Okay? Foreknowledge. And so God knows things coming in the future. And therefore, the word of wisdom is available for God to give you counsel and wisdom and instruction concerning things to come so that, you can, so that you can act in a way that will cause you to walk through that blessed and unscathed. Amen. As I was about to say earlier, that the, the gifts of the Spirit, particularly the verbal gifts or the vocal gifts, work in conjunction usually with like prophecy. So someone's ministering, many, most of the time the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge will operate within the realm of prophecy. Now, you don't have to have a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge to prophesy. But usually they work in tandem together. Okay? So you can have the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge without, with prophecy, but you can have prophecy without those things being a manifestation. Lord, can just say, I love you. It can, it can be, you can be inspired by the Holy Ghost to just walk up and comfort somebody by the Spirit. And speak by sudden divine inspiration of God. Prophecy does not always mean a foretelling of future events. It can mean to foretell, to speak by unction of the Holy Ghost. And say something that somebody has already said before. But it's by unction by the Holy Ghost. I was counseling somebody one time. And um, they kept telling me, I know that, I know that. And I just stopped. I finally got tired of hearing that. And I don't mean it in a bad way. I just, you know, it's like, okay, you're, you're missing this. Because your head's going, I've already heard that. I stopped and said, let me tell you something. I'm not speaking to you out of my mind. I'm not speaking to you out of what I think. I'm speaking to you by the inspiration and the unction of the Holy Ghost. So what I say is anointed. Your friends may have said something, but I'm speaking by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Here's a different weight. Amen. Glory to God. And so somebody might walk up to you and say, you know, you're, you're, God wants to bless you, Karen. And I just kind of go over and I come by you and, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost unctions me. And I look up and say, God wants to bless you, Karen. Hallelujah. And she recognizes the anointing and receives that. And the other person was just as sincere, but there was not, it wasn't prophecy. They were just trying to encourage her. But it comes by the Holy Ghost. Woo! Glory to God. Changes everything. Can somebody shout glory? glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. To another, the word of knowledge. And what is that? That is facts in the mind of God of present events. Actually, present or past. So, so you could, I, could, I could walk up to Cap and say, you know, I know that, you know, when you were, you know, young, a teenager, that... Um, such and such happened in your life. But God wants you to know that that's not, that's not going to be able to hold you back. And he's never told me this. What happened? That was, a, that was a word of knowledge. God's ministering to him supernaturally through a vessel who's unaware of what took place. That's a word of knowledge. God knows about it. Amen. Now listen. Watch out. For the people who stand up and start telling you your address and your telephone number and what street you live on, you know, and how much money's in your bank account and you're supposed to give all of it. You know, you got $3,475 in your bank account and the Lord just showed me that's what you're supposed to give tonight. 
that's, that's, that's not word of knowledge. That is a familiar spirit operating and, and using a supernatural manifestation to, to harm you. I saw, I mean, there was a number of years ago, there was a t particular television network that had this guy on there all the time. He'd just tell people where they lived, what their address was, you know, what age their child was. And it just went one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, night after night. And just something didn't sit right. Well, you come in, the guy was a homosexual. Well, he won't operate in the Holy Ghost. I can tell you that. I didn't call any network. I didn't call any names. And I didn't tell you what time era it was in. We're not having to hurt people, but people were all going, just oodling and gooing and throwing money. They kept throwing money. Because when people get touched supernaturally, yeah. this is why ministers have to be careful. You have to keep your heart right. Because God will judge you for abusing his people. I, I don't believe God will judge me. I don't care. You, you could be all, under all the grace you want, but shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. You can't abuse God's people. Hello? And expect God just to turn the other way and let you keep doing it. Amen. So we have to be careful about these things. Ministers, you've got to keep your heart right. You can't get greedy after filthy lucre. You can't begin to use things in the spirit to get people to give you money. It's one thing to say, hey, we have a need. You give, it's another thing for me to work a miracle or have a miracle manifest or a supernatural event take place. And then you go, whoa, it's a good time to take up an offering. What's happened? The people are wide open. They're excited about that. You know, something supernatural took place. They are, they are easy to be manipulated at that point. We have to be careful about these things. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. See, and you go to the other extreme, well, we're not going to give you that minister anything. All they want is your money. Well, it takes money to run the kingdom of God. Those same people, if they're running a business, <clears throat> are trying to get money out of your hand. They'll put a placard on your dining room, on, on your table when you come in to eat, of a cherry cheese cake with a, with, cake with a whole can of, of uh, cherries on it. And then when it comes out of the kitchen, you got two. Hello? So anyway, now it takes money to run the kingdom, but the, the big thing is ministers have to keep their hearts right and guard their heart. As dad used to say, uh, dad Hagen used to say, you got to watch out for the three G's, the gold, the glory, and the girls. Get you in trouble. Now, not, not that girls are bad, but you start, you start lusting after girls and, and start running after girls and not thought, keeping your heart pure and your thought life pure and keeping your, your other things, you're, they'll get you in trouble. But you used to do the same thing with money. You start running after money. And that's, this is where a lot of times we get in trouble with the gifts. People start you know, prophesying or using the gifts to get money. Hallelujah. I know I had a minister come in here a number of years ago. He, had, um, he was from Africa, and he had just come from a camp meeting up in Virginia. And uh, he said, you know, one night that this lady, this lady that from uh, South America had ministered, and, you know, the gold dust thing, building was full. He said she didn't really minister anything that had anything in it. But the people filled the offering buckets because they were seeing gold dust on Bibles here and there. So the next night, this young man ministered, preached a sermon that was more, uh, that was so far beyond what it, 80 people were there. Went from like hundreds to 80. And he ministered by the unction of the Holy Ghost and ministered by the Spirit. And hardly anything in the offering. Not that we minister for, you understand that. You, you understand that. We minister because we're called to. Now, Paul said, it's right for the minister to live of the gospel. I read somewhere the other day, somebody said, Paul didn't ever take any money. He just lit, he made tents. And certain. No, he did that for a two-year period somewhere. Go study your Bible. He, he did that to prove to them because they, I, evidently that same devil was running around back then. And he said that I might not be, you know, that you may not have ac no accusation against me. I, I work with my own hands. Go study it. He didn't do that his whole ministry. Am I right? Can I, talk, can, can I talk about it? Hallelujah. All right. And so God can give you a word about the things that have happened presently or past. And I had to say that because we do not want to let somebody be a shyster 
and come up to you and go, oh, you, you live in Jamestown. You live, you live behind a church in Jamestown. You just bought the house. Watch out. Because the next thing coming down the road is, you know, in some type of manipulation where you're giving them money, then that wasn't the Holy You know, we're, we're going to lift up Jesus. And you've got to ask yourself, why is he saying that? Why is that being said? Why, why would the Holy Ghost give all that information out? Honestly. How about this? God walks up to you and says, now I don't know you, but you know, I just have it in my spirit that you just got diagnosed with cancer. Now here, here, here. Last year, I was down at Fayetteville at Pastor, uh, Pastor Carver's Faith Conference. And I'm ministering, you know, after the service. And all of a sudden, I started getting these words, kidney. Somebody, there's somebody with kidney problems. Somebody's got kidney problems. And this girl's sitting on the front row, and she stands up bawling. She's pregnant as she can be. She's bawling. All right? It comes up. She had just gotten that day the report from the doctor that from the, from the ultrasound, her baby's kidneys weren't formed right. They were ex extremely concerned about it and hadn't even told her pastor yet because she just found out. So we prayed for her. I called back a couple weeks. I said, well, what happened with the girl? With the she went back to the doctor and the baby's kidneys were normal. Went back this year to preach at this faith conference this year. And that, that woman with that baby was there. Baby was normal and healthy. Now, see, that was a word of knowledge. God reveals them not to get people to follow me, but so he could work a miracle and if people just love Jesus, praise God. Amen? And here's that baby just, just I, I, actually, when I got to the church this year, I was in, I was sitting, talking to Sister Paula, and, and I said, now, that, that woman with the baby with the kids, she's, and she said, she's right there. They were right there. They were right, had gotten to church, and, there's, and right there holding the baby. So there's, she said, there's the baby right there. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, he goes on and says here to another faith, uh, Amplified says special faith by the same spirit. What is that? The ability to believe things that you, you couldn't otherwise believe. Raising the dead. Right. Amen. I mean, an hour of Christ where you, have no, you don't have any faith about something, all of a sudden a supernatural faith drops into you to believe God for something. Hallelujah. Like, all the bills paid. You, 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 you could be going along, I'm just doing everything I know to do, Lord. Do it. And all of a sudden, you stand up one day, we have our bills paid. And something different, it's not, it's not there's, there's, a, there's, a super, there's a divine revelation, a supernatural, special faith. And the thing is, here's how special faith is. You can do it this time, you can't turn around and do it next week. So when it comes to raising the dead, you just can't turn around and go raise it. Oh, if you have that gift, you can go to the hospital, go to the morgue and raise everybody. No, you can't. You know, maybe you raise one person from the dead and nobody else. Something special in manifestation, special faith. Glory to God. It, now, it looks like faith that we have from speaking the word and believing the word of God. It works like that, but it's supernaturally and deposited and divinely inspired and goes beyond what you could do on your own. Amen? To another, the gifts of healing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing serious justice to this. We have to do a series on the gifts of the Spirit, all right? To another, gifts of healings. Now, I'm, I'm saying that because down in um, verse 28, um, it says, God sets some in the church and he says, gifts of healings. So in the 20th verse, he said, King James has it translated, gifts of healings. What's that mean? You might, now, now, Dad Hagen had a tremendous ministry along the lines of growths, cancers and growths. Now, Branham, on the other hand, had, uh, had a, a, a miraculous along, along deaf, mute, and blind people. So you could line 10 of people, 10 people deaf, blind, or mute, and, and, and uh, line them up, and he got in line, nine, 9 out of 10 would get healed every time. Hello? Brother Hagen, his, his ministry was along the lines of, of, of cancers, and tum particularly tumors and growths. Does that mean that other people didn't get healed? No, that, that's not what it means. It means that there's, a, there's gifts of healings, and you may be stronger in your life if you, God's using you that way in one arena than another. You may go down there and get can't, uh, cripple people healed all the time and can't heal, can't heal a wart on, somewhere, somewhere else. 
Well, then somebody else walks along there. Any kind of growth on anybody just falls off. They said when Daddy Seymour would pray for people, they said they saw warts fall off of people's just, uh, people who had these diseases where they had lots of warts. They just fall off their face on the ground. Brand new skin. Hallelujah. Tremendous miracles. That was Azusa Street. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there's different types of gifts of healings. So there might be cancer, some might be growth, some might be um, blood diseases, other ailments, stuff, whatever it is. You know, walk in your gift. And if you have that kind of manifestation operating in your life, rejoice in it. Praise the Lord and just thank God for it. And don't get jealous if somebody else has something different working in their life. Wow. It's God that giveth and divides every man severally as he wills. Amen. They're manifest as a spirit wills, not as a man wills. Amen. Then he goes on and says, another working of miracles. Well, miracles, let's, now let's, let's face it, folks. We saw a lot of miracles in the Old Testament. Axe heads floating, rivers stopping, dry land. I mean, the Jordan River got split so many times it didn't know which way to go. Amen. A prophet would come along and split the Jordan River and walk over on dry ground. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, if I said, which way do I go? Red Sea splitting, miracle. I mean, the, <clears throat> the miracles that, that set, you know, of, of the plagues were, mir were miracles. Amen. We use the term in such a loose manner today that people don't really understand. That's a miraculous sunset. No, not it's a beautiful sunset. It's not miraculous. Okay. We, we talk about the miracles of nature, the miracles that they're not really miracles. See, a miracle is, is, is a divine interruption into the ordinary course and affairs of man and nature. Amen. Remember when Joshua told the moon and the sun to stand still? That was a miracle. And somebody did a study in history and found out there's one day missing. <laughs> and we know where it was. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, to another prophecy, when people who speak by, div by divine inspiration, you can speak and preach by prophecy. But every time you preach, is not prophecy. But you can be unction. I mean, I, I, I'll have it happen. You know, I, and when I'm out of this church, the preaching anointing comes more often. When we were a younger church, it was here more often because we were a young church. Now, you know, and, and I, I, don't, I don't doubt that if, if we have a great influx of young believers, that that would be more of that manifestation of that anointing. Okay, but, you know, we, we teach more now, not because I like teaching more. I'd rather preach. But you got to go with the flow. you got to go with what anointing is manifest. And so a lot of times when people get to preaching, they're, they're beginning to speak by ins sudden inspiration of God and prophesy. They're really prophesying. Speaking unto men and the edification. He that prophesieth, you know, edifieth. Speaks unto men and the edification. So we can speak by sudden expression. Dad Hagen used to talk about that, you know, many evangelists preach by prophecy. Hallelujah. To another discerning of spirits. That means you have a divine revelation or actually see into the spirit realm. If you see into the spirit realm, you're operating in discerning of spirits. But you can... Uh, have a divine revelation that there's, there's a manifestation of a demon spirit in something, all right? Now, that can also be in conjunction with the word of knowledge. But the Holy Ghost can also have you discern what spirit is in manifestation. Amen. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the right spirit in manifestation. That's not the spirit of God. Um, I've heard people talk about, you know, that you know, ministers... One night they, they take and they throw water on, and, you know, they get a word from God, throw water on them, and they all get healed. Next night he tries to replicate it and goes out there and does it, and they all get wet. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can tell you, your, your spirit can be in, and, and, and people who base their ministry on a gift are susceptible by being used by the wrong spirit. Because they're waiting for some type of manifestation. And if the Holy Ghost doesn't do it, and the, he, they're, they're, they're waiting for that manifestation. And the people are waiting for that manifestation. And the pressure's on to have that manifestation. And the Spirit of God's not in that manifestation. The devil will accommodate you. And if you give into it, you will have it. And it won't be God. 
And we need to teach our people to be smart enough to be able to discern the spirits or, you know, to hear the voice of God. And if the, that, that spirit's, if that's in manifestation, the discerning of spirits, yield to that and listen to that. That's not God in there. To another divers, because divers is not in the Greeks, so it's kinds of tongues. Now this is, if you study this out a little bit better, you'll find out. Um, this is ministry with tongues. It's not praying in the Spirit. He that prayeth in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Amen. Speaks divine secrets with God, chapter 14. But they can have a ministry of tongues and interpretation of tongues, which is equivalent to prophecy, by the way. When there's tongues and interpretation of tongues, it'll be equivalent to prophecy and manifestation. Two nickels or a dime, who cares? It's till 10 cent. Amen? If you went into a store and something was 20 cent and you had two dimes, or if you put out four quarters, that cashier does not care. They will take the four, amount of four quarters, the four nickels just as fast as they'll take the two dimes. They don't care. So prophecy is equivalent to tongues and interpretation of tongues. And they can be manifested in different ways. They can be, they can be all kinds of languages. God can speak in a language known to someone there. I had that happen before. Not often, but I've had it happen before. I was in the Czech Republic. And uh, we had gypsies there. Now, and that's not a derogatory term. They were gypsies. They tell you they were gypsies. And gypsies traveled all over Eastern Europe, particularly Eastern Europe, all over Eastern Europe. They have their own language. Okay? And they usually speak a local language. And so these gypsies were there. And... Um, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the thing, and actually, they, they didn't, it's, it's, it's another lady there, I'm sorry, I, was, I, was, I just kind of remember the Czech Republic, remember the gypsies, hallelujah, they were crazy, they, 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 get, they get right in with you, you preach wild, they get wild, but I was up there at, at the end of one of the services, I got, to, I, we're just kind of praying, and I got over to speaking in tongues, and praying out in tongues, and this woman came up to, the, to, to um, um, Larry Keaton, overseer there, Larry and Angela, and um, but they came up to uh, Brother Larry and said, said, and started talking to him and said, because they spoke in English, and they said, I said, he was praying in Czech. Uh, I didn't know I was praying in Czech. And they said, he said, well, really? She said, yeah, he's praying in Czech. What was he saying? He says, I see it. I see it. It's on the horizon. It's almost here. I see it. I, see it. I kept saying that over and over. I see it. It's on the horizon. It's almost here. And remember, things, spiritual things are not the same as natural things. This was 93, 94. But I was praying out in check. And she understood it. It was a, it was, it was a divine revelation. So that was a sign to her. Yeah. I was speaking by the Holy Ghost. See, this is a manifestation of diverse tongues or kinds of tongues. This is not your private prayer life. I was speaking things out by the unction of the Holy Ghost. And she was understanding it. Hello? We've had all kinds of things like that happen where people come in and they speak a foreign language and, and all of a sudden the minister get over into the spirit and speak to them. One guy was a Jew, came into a service one time. New Jew, new, new, new Hebrew, new Greek. And the minister began to pray and began to pray in Hebrew and then turned around and prayed in Greek and, and gave him the plan of salvation right there in those two languages. Hallelujah. I shook him up. Amen. Hallelujah. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. What is that? Interpretation, not translation. Have you ever heard somebody speak in tongues and then, the, the, then when somebody begins to interpret, it's not the same length and time? And you're kind of going, there's got to be more because they spoke in tongues for five minutes. He spoke and in, in, interpreted or interpretation of tongues in, in two and a half. No. Nope. Now, you know this, you know, have you ever heard somebody try to take an English, say something in English, and then you turn around and say it in Spanish? I'm glad you're here tonight. And you're like, how long does it take, I'm glad you're here tonight, to be said in Spanish? You know? Um, so, so, but what it is, is interpretation is not translation. When I'm, uh, when I'm preaching in Bible schools overseas, I'll, sometimes you use a colloquial. Happen a pig and slop. They had to. They had to hear that. No, 
that they have to use a, a colloquial expression in their language to say because if they translate it, pig and happen and pig and slop, everybody's going to be going like this. And they did. So we turned around and interpreted. She said, we don't use that expression. <laughs> <coughs> what do you say when you're really happy? And she said, you know, what, what, what kind of colloquial expression do you use? Use that to say pig, happen to pig and slop. And she did. And they, all, they all got it. Remember my first time in Estonia, uh, Estima, back in, back in 90, uh, 92, somewhere in that era, 92. Um, they had three people that were, did the interpreting, and they spoke, also, obviously all spoke English, and they spoke Estonian because they were Estonian. And they'd be going along. If one of them didn't do it right, the other two would stop them. And they'd all have this, this, this conversation in Estonian. Now, the whole class hears what they're saying in Estonian, so they're all listening in, kind of like this, waiting to get, you know, to get the gist of what they were trying to say, and they all get done. And they look over and say, it's okay, we got it. What did you get? You know, I have no idea what y'all just did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, interpretation of tongues is not translation of tongues. It is the essence of what was said. Okay? It's not going to be a translation. It's going to be the essence of what was said. We have things like, um, oh, je vous en prie. Loosely translated from French into English, meaning uh, it's my pleasure. But now if you, if you type in, you know, translate, it's my pleasure, it comes out, uh, some mon plaisir or something like that. But slang-wise, or you can say, je vous en prie. Okay? Well, it doesn't, tra if you translate it raw, it doesn't mean that. Okay? You can say, très super. Well, that's, that's, that's now obviously, super is English for super. You say très in front of it, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a slang, for awesome. But that's not the word for awesome in French. Okay? So, you've, so if I say awesome, you know, use it in a slang way, and somebody comes along and they go, pair, to interpret that, they've got the essence of it. Okay? And, you know, it comes back very super. And if you translate it back in English, that's very super. Well, that's not, you know, you're trying to say awesome or it's out of sight or something like that. We're getting the essence of the meaning, and we're interpreting that. Interpretation, that's, why you get, that's when people do books, and they, and they quote, translating it into another language. They really have to be able to interpret what was said and, and put it into the language that the people they're inter interpreting it for so that it says the same thing, carries the same meaning, and doesn't lose anything, but it's in a way, you, like you can't say happier than a, than a um, pig in slop or a pig in sunshine. Or a BB in a box or something. I don't know. All kinds of things. So we have, we've listed these. Again, we're not doing a real thorough study on this. All these works, that one and self-same spirit, divided to every man as he wills. Hallelujah. Ooh, we're running a little bit. How many give me 10 minutes? Hallelujah. All right. For as the body is one, it has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. And we're going to stop right here. Notice that these are all divided, manifested, brought to people's lives as the Spirit wills. You cannot just go, well, God gave me prophecy one day. I mean, we used to, there was a lady that used to be in a church that we, that we uh, <laughs> how do you say this, be nice. But I'm telling you, every service she had to have, uh, you had to say something. She had a word. And I'll be honest with you, nine times out of ten when she opened her mouth, you may as well run out in the middle of the, uh, of the winter and jump down on a cold shower head. Pew! Killed any anointing in the building. She just opened her mouth and it was like, because she wanted to prophesy. You can't prophesy because you want to. You can't work a miracle because you want to. They are these gifts are, are manifestations are manifested when and as the Spirit wills they be. Amen. And let me say that if you ever start taking the glory unto yourself when they are, you will not see them working. Amen. <laughs>